Good afternoon or good morning to everyone here online. Uh, I'm Wendy Chen from the University of Hong Kong. And I'd like to say thanks to FAO and the, the Rural Forestry Department of Thailand government for organizing this virtual meeting, um, giving us this opportunity to feel connected <laughs> um, with uh, each other and also meeting up with some old friends and making new friends in this still difficult times. And uh, thank you, Simone, <laughs> for your kind invitation. I'm very happy to take this opportunity to talk about how urban forests can contribute to cleaner cities. Um, as if, uh, emphasized by, by Simone already in, in his um, opening talk, we need to enhance our urban forests so that uh, diverse uh, benefit can be garnered for improving citizens' quality of life and achieving sustainable development goals. One of the major ecosystem service or one of the major benefit that we can expect is air pollutant removal so that cities can be made cleaner and also healthy. Um, actually, urban air pollution is a momentous global issue, maybe not at this moment. Uh, the World Health Organization has identified air pollution actually as the greatest environmental risk to human health. Uh, according to a recent study, 90% of the world's urban population uh, live in cities exceeding the air quality standards as specified uh, in their national or regional uh, guidelines. And also uh, an estimate suggested that outdoor air pollution uh, can claim about 4.2 million lives each year worldwide. Uh, it, it's a huge number. Um, particularly, air pollution is of great concern in many Asian cities. Uh, in the cities, elevated pollutant concentrations and a large amount of potential sufferers converge. If we take PM 2.5 as an example here, uh, it's a very common urban air pollutant uh, penetrating deeper into cavities and tissues of human body and affecting seriously human health. As you can see from this uh, global map of PM 2.5, the highest concentrations are found in central and um, Southern Asia. Um, if we look at Chinese cities, urban air pollution has become a top concern. Uh, in a national survey uh, conducted several years ago, nearly 80% of the respondents said that air quality or air pollution is a big problem affecting their health and daily life. This would be even further deteriorated by the projected urban population growth, uh, increasing urbanization, uh, coupled with impact on climate change, on atmospheric conditions and weather variability. Um, we all understand that the myriad policy, technological and culture changes are required definitely for the curtailment of emission of this air pollutants at the source. But beyond that, clearly the mitigation of ongoing ambient air pollution is urgently needed but it is very challenging because of the large volume of air into which the pollutants have been dispersed into in comparison with the surface area uh, to which any potential uh, solutions may be applied. Uh, but it 
Of course, it is essential in order to reduce citizens' exposure to air pollution and uh, in order to improve public health. Um, urban trees and urban forests offer a very um, effective or cost-effective nature-based solution uh, to cleaning up air pollutants. A number of physical phys uh, chemical processes on all above ground uh, structures of the plants help cleaning air pollutants. Uh, I want to mention two major pathways, um, including deposition onto plant surfaces and also the stomata uptake when possible. Uh, for the particulate matters, as shown here by this diagram, the majority of this particulate matters can be removed by urban trees or urban forests from the ambient atmosphere uh, through deposition and dispersion. When crossing into trees and plants, concentrated clouds of minuscule particulates or tiny particle, particles can get dispersed and, tra and trapped in plant surfaces. So diluted by the air, leeward of the urban forest or woodland, dispersion and deposition effects can significantly reduce PM concentrations and sometimes even modify the composition of uh, particulates. Uh, when it rains, the trapped particles uh, would be washed away by water into uh, urban drainage system. Gases air pollutant um, will normally be removed through dry deposition, primarily by uptake via stomata. Here you can see uh, those stomata are tiny openings uh, we can find in leaves, not only leaves actually, uh, and also stems and other plant organs. Uh, as illustrated by this diagram, uh, gases pollutant can penetrate the uh, leaf cell walls and then enter the leaves um, internal structures through stomata and then may be absorbed by water fume uh, to form acids here, as you can see, uh, through different chemical reactions uh, with the inner leaf chemicals. There is a burgeoning literature on the removal capacity of urban forests or urban trees for different air pollutants on the basis of field measurement or simulation models. Uh, as shown by this figure, uh, the major pollutants analyzed in those papers are particulate matters in different sizes like PM 2.5, PM 10, following by uh, nitrogen dioxide and ozone. Uh, well, many other air pollutants uh, have also received increasing attention in scientific research, such as um, the sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and so on and so forth. And at present, studies are mostly found in the United States and China. Um, pretty scarce in other Asian cities and almost absent in African countries where actually the air, pollut air pollution is also a very uh, significant issue. The removal capacity of particulate matters by urban trees, or urban plants have been extensively investigated. But the empirical results vary greatly, as you can see uh, from this figure. Many factors actually um, will determine the removal um, rate. 
uh, such as species, site conditions, or the distance between the source and the um, trees, and also the um, pollutant concentrations, composition and configuration of plants in urban forests, local uh, meteorological conditions, and many other um, factors. For uh, the uptake rate, I mean the gaseous air pollutant uptake, besides those influ influencing factors, you know, many other factors may also um, matter, like the uh, turbulent diff diffusion above and within the tree canopy, urban forest canopy, the photosynthetic activity and turgor pressure, uh, diffusion close to the individual component of vegetation and even within stomata, huh? uh, and reads of chemical reaction between gases, uh, pollutant and leaf surface, and also the read of solution in side of the urban plants. Um, of course, uh, the scientific evidence so far we have suggests that planting more trees uh, will increase pollutant removal, that's for sure. Um, urban planners and policy makers have, I think, already recognized that there's an um, important uh, message and uh, urban trees can be regarded as significant things for air pollution. Um, for sure, more trees with larger leaves and the bigger canopies, if we can uh, precisely measure the canopy size using the method <laughs> suggested by Steve, right? And um, can the larger trees uh, in general can trap and uptake more pollutants, uh, therefore more effective in air pollutant uh, mitigation. Um, but um, a fact is that the most polluted areas inside of cities are those places with very limited space for planting. So therefore, I think the most important message we need to consider when forming or formulating relevant policies, greenery plans is that we need to um, find appropriate trees or right trees for right places. Um, so to enhance the magnitude of, of air pollutant removal, um, a key to success lies in understanding the um, species char characteristic and site condition. The interaction between these two can um, help us to evaluate appropriately or accurately the uh, removal air pollution. For tree uh, characteristics, uh, it's, necessary, it's necessary for us to think about, for example, tree shape and porosity, leaf surface um, morphology, the availability and complexity of the uh, cuticular vexes, um, arrangement of stomata or the availability uh, and arrangement of stomata, presence of tiny hairs, which could be very effective in trapping the uh, particulates. Um, and in the meantime, I think site conditions should also be carefully evaluated and taken into consideration, particularly like the soil, air pollutant source, the direction of uh, wind and many other um, factors. Then uh, appropriate species can be selected and used uh, in right places. I still have another key factor. Uh, I believe it will be very important. Uh, this factor is associated with the uh, comprehensive evaluation of air pollutant removal capacity and other co-benefits. 
and also possible these services. Of course, most of the time improving air quality is usually not the only objective of city managers. I think even according to the SO action plan, we have diverse multiple objectives. So other three properties uh, such as the uh, heat mitigation potentials, uh, stress tolerance and water use efficiency here and the shading, the uh, emission potentials and many other factors. Uh, we need to consider them jointly in, uh, instead of individually. So uh, in doing so, a synergistic combination of other benefit is um, possible so that the co, uh, the, the co enhancement can be planned and um, practically achieved. Uh, additionally, a number of studies actually highlight that the interaction between individual plants and ambient air quality are uh, very complicated. Uh, many species can have both positive and negative impact. Uh, so effective plant selection and for air pollution mitigation and also a comprehensive evaluation of species uh, for their benefit and um, detrimental impact um, can facilitate um, full-scale understanding of the balance between the benefit that we would like to have and the detrimental aspect of vegetation at mm, different levels from species, individual species to uh, urban forest and even the whole uh, green landscape within a city. Um, so <laughs> before closing, I would like to highlight that urban trees have long been and unanimously regarded as the lungs uh, of urban ecosystem. And it's, it's a concept all stakeholders and policy makers uh, fully recognize because trees um, can absorb carbon dioxide and emit oxygen effectively. And we need to uh, take it one step further. Um, we need to also recognize urban trees as levers of urban ecosystems where the majority of population are living. And we anticipate even more and more population will move into urbanized areas. This urbanization, as I have, have already mentioned at the beginning of this um, talk, means that a lot of air pollutants uh, will be discharged or released into the atmosphere. So there is an urgent need for us to recognize the uh, function of urban trees or urban forest as levers of urban ecosystems for the region that they can effectively remove toxic air pollutants and make cities cleaner and healthier. Um, so I will stop here and then leave a little bit time for uh, any questions uh, if any audience would like to raise. <laughs>